In this overview of the commandlets in PowerShell, I'll give you a brief overview of the commandlets and what they are, how they work, and um, how you can see a list of all of them along with a lot of uh, other useful examples. The first thing I want to go over here is the git-command commandlet. The git-command commandlet is the commandlet in PowerShell that gives you a list of all of the other commandlets that are available to you. And if you see, if you just do git-command, that gives you all of the different ones that are available to you at this point in time. And you'll notice that the names of them are a verb dash a noun. That is the standard naming convention of PowerShell, as I mentioned in the, uh, the lecture. So you got remove dash computer, register dash SIMV indication event, out null, null, new. And you see this is just the verb. It's always verb dash noun. What I ran into whenever I was creating some functions and commandlets myself, you can actually name the commandlet a different name. It'll allow you to, but every time you import your module, it'll say uh, does not meet the standard. So the designer of the PowerShell really wanted you to stay with the standard of verb dash noun. And when I say verb, I mean they want the verbs that they define. So let's go over that real quickly here. You'll see so let's get an example of the verbs that you can use. Uh, get dash verb. So this is all of these verbs that you're actually allowed to use when you create new commandlets. Add, clear, close, join. Um, so if you ever uh, get to the point to where you know enough about PowerShell to create your own commandlets, these are the verbs that you would actually use. This is the big list. So again, you can get those by get dash verb here. Another thing I wanted to show you with get dash command was get dash command dash verb get or get dash verb set, anything like that. What that does is that allows you to put get dash command and then give a parameter of verb to it and then whatever other name you want. This is the this is the exact same content that you would get with just the get dash command commandlet output, but it just kind of filters out anything that starts with git or anything that starts with write. It's just a real quick way to, to filter it out so you don't have to have that, uh, you don't have to page through all that stuff just to find what you're looking for. And the same thing goes with git dash command dash noun. Verbs are different, but the noun is always the same. If you do git dash command and dash noun or dash verb, and then whatever noun you want, that works too. And while we're in here and showing you what the parameters are, if you ever want to see a parameter on a particular commandlet, you just do the commandlet space dash and hit start hitting tab. And what that will do, that will cycle through all of the parameters that are available for that commandlet. A lot of these I don't even know myself. I don't use the git dash command commandlet very much because I know a lot of them by heart already. But you can go through and just cycle through all the parameters that you can that are available to you there. It's another good way to get help on a particular commandlet. Second of all, I wanted to show you the help system. The help system is a great system for PowerShell that allows you to get information and examples on any commandlet and many different scripting methodologies and ways to use the console and all kinds of stuff. So by default, you just do git dash help here and that will give you some information that's basically useless that at least give you an output of what it is. The real way to get use git help is git help and then you do a commandlet name. So let's say you want to get services off of a computer. Get service, those are all the services on my computer at this point in time. Let's say I want I don't know how to use it, so I just do git help git dash service enter. This is where it really helps out. Now, just get help, get service doesn't really give you a whole lot of information. Sure, it'll give you the um, parameter names and what data type, which we'll go over a little bit later on what it includes, but it's still not not really useful at all. What really helped me whenever I was first starting was get help service dash examples. 
And because I'm going to not edit many of these things out, this didn't work out right for me because you can see here, get dash help dash service examples should show examples, but get dash help cannot find the help files. There's a command line on this computer is displaying only partial help. It's telling me to download and install the help files for the module that includes this command let use update help. So let's do, let's say I do update help here. Downloading, installing, it's going to go through all of them here and get all this stuff up to date. Let's try it again. And now you see, we see all this new stuff here. This is where the true power of the PowerShell help system is for me. When I was starting, these examples were critical for me to, to understand this. It gives you an example of the what you type, exactly what it does. It goes from a simple example all the way down to the very advanced examples. You know, for example, something like this with the format table and uh, even using the pipeline a little bit here. These get dash examples is by far the best one you can do. And you can do this for any commandlet that you want. Get dash content dash examples. Or you can do get dash content dash examples. Again, hit tab or hit your uh, dash here and hit start hitting tab and let's say I want the all of them here so I want to do detailed see this gets very detailed information on everything you can play around with that the parameters with the, the help system but it's definitely a very nice help system to use